Okay, so let's um, now look at the other option under that selection menu that I want to get to today, and that's called Select by Location. So before we do that, I want to zoom into a county, and I have Ontario County selected here. Let's zoom into that county area. So this is uh, the Ontario County, and what I want to do, let's turn off our major roads and go back to our detailed roads. And I'd like to select all the roads that are within that county. Now, I'm going to use the selection tool, and this is going to get us all the arcs that are in within or partially within. And uh, it's not going to cut them at the county line. All right, so we go up to our selection menu and we select by location. And we have this dialog, which is a little different than the other one, in that we have a selection method. Those are the same. We have the same four. And we're going to select features from, which means it's going to go back to the full data set. And we're going to select them from detailed roads. And notice I can make a selection from all of my data sets at once. So I could select from detailed roads. I could select the townships uh, and, and things like that. Let's, let's do that. Let's go ahead and select townships and detailed roads based on what layer. And we come down here and we see a source layer. And our source layer is going to be um, Ontario County. So it's going to use the, the shape, the location of Ontario County to select the features from detailed roads and features from towns. And then further down we have this option list here. And these listings, let me pull this up so we can see all of them as I drop down, gives us a number of ways in which we can make this selection. The most simple and straightforward is intersect the source layer features. So in other words, anything that comes into the Ontario polygon will be selected. Now, there's other things that they must be either um, they, they are within the source feature layer, so anything that's partially outside would not be selected and, and, and all those options. So you can look, go to the online help, look at select by location, and look at these different methods to find out all of the different possibilities you have. So let's just grab intersect. And at this stage too, what's neat about this tool is that you could apply a buffer. So let's go ahead and apply this. It goes ahead and selects the features. Let me pull it over so you can see what we have. So indeed, it looks like we've selected a lot of the roads here do stop at the county boundary. Some go beyond. And then we're selecting out here, and that's what we're seeing here. And then out here, these are the townships that have a part of their boundary either touches Ontario County or is totally within Ontario County. So you might want to make some adjustments there. You might run and run this again and say, you know, I don't really need the towns. Let's undo the towns. And, and then you can change your selection method. You can say... Uh, um, are within the source feature and then apply it and see what effect you get then. And we get these detailed roads. Here, let me first come over here and let's clear our whole selection set and run it again. I want to get the towns open. There. Now notice that we didn't get all the roads because these pieces, part of them go beyond. And we ask for everything that's within. So those are some of the limitations of this option. Okay, so hit OK. It's done. So now that's our detail. That's in our part of our detailed roads. And if we want to grab that data set now and we want to save it out, again, you remember how we right-clicked on the layer to get to context menu, go down to the data option, and say export. And we spit this back out again to a new piece in our geo database, and we're just going to call it. Um, Ontario roads. Okay. Saves it out, adds it back in if we want it, and there it goes. And let's clear our suction set up here and turn on our turn off our detailed roads and turn on our Ontario roads. So those are two ways to make selections by attributes and by their location as defined by either a polygon or some other feature. I did want to look just briefly at 
another toolbar options and that is this measuring tool as well as we'll take a look at the find uh, tool in the drawing toolbar quickly um, let's uh, turn off the Ontario roads and let's turn off the county and I'm just going to quickly zoom in to a small area of this map at Honeyoy Lake and let's just say we want to digitize that lake the measure tool that's in our our regular tools toolbar if we click on that we get a little dialog that pops up that allows us to adjust how our measurement information is displayed and fed back to us so if we go to this dialog we have here options for measuring a line measuring an area or uh, measuring a, a specific feature and we can also show we can show our totals and turn it on and off type of thing and we can adjust our values from this drop down list that we want distances to be recorded in meters or in uh, English units of miles and feet or we can have our area also displayed in metric or in uh, English units so say you want to know how many acres are in, in um, Honey Oil Lake you would change the area to acres grab the polygon measuring tool and then just start clicking and since it's polygon uh, it's going to close back on itself automatically and of course how accurate this is will depend on just how accurate your the map that you're tracing as well as the fact that uh, how you're digitizing it's um, certainly isn't going to replace the capabilities of the feature the geodatabase feature class that calculates your shape areas and perimeters and things like that but it's a fast way to get a rough estimate of acreage and when you double click you're complete, you're finished, but it still retains the area measurement for the last um, graphic or element that you digitize. So you can see that the area is on the order of uh, 1800 acres. Okay, so that's the, and if you do want the measurement in uh, say uh, kilometers, if you just click kilometers while it's still up there, it will convert your current data information into kilometers and so it's in 7.4 square kilometers which is very nice because sometimes you you forget to change the units before you start digitizing so if we wanted to measure a line if we want to know how long Honeyoy Lake is we can go right from the center here and just kind of go down through the center of the lake and we see it's about uh, um, 69,000 meters doesn't mean a lot to me offhand so let's change the distance to uh, to miles and it's essentially a four mile long lake about the tenth the size of Cuba so those are that's the thing that you can do with the measure tool nice and quick measurements on the fly okay let's uh, close that the other tool here is something called a fine tool right here if we click on it it pops up the fine dialog let me pull that over to here and in the fine dialog we can find features and locations so if we say if we click on locations you can see that it's going out and it's going to use a service online service to identify our location and so if we I have like Auburn New York in here uh, we can pick any any city let's try uh, uh, another city, Utica and um, say find and here are some of the options and their scoring yep this is the one I want if you right click on the the option then you, ha you can flash it you can zoom to it if we zoom to it here it will zoom our um, view to Utica and there's Utica now one of the other things too is we can search for features in our own data sets so let's say we want to find out where I-90 is and we're going to use the detailed roads data set and we're going to say find features that are similar or contain I-90 in the field. And if we want to, we can specify which field to search in. So it's going to be in the full name. And this will help it run a little faster. So with them, we just hit find. It will go down through that field looking for I-90. And then all the options will be given down below. Down here and we can select one like we did here but obviously I-90 has many segments so what I'm going to do is scroll all the way down and 
use the shift key to select all of them and then I'm going to right click and say zoom to so it'll zoom out and show us I-90 uh, we'll see all of I-90 hopefully right click and we see we have a select option so we can actually select them from our data set and you notice it's in a different color it's not the green it's, it's in the selection color of cyan and we've selected it from our data set so again we could then go over we could right click on detailed roads go down to data and export this out as I-90 and reduce our data set that way okay and lastly I want to look at uh, for toolbars I want to look at the draw toolbar so let's unselect that we'll click on this button right here to clear our selected features and uh, let's zoom in a little bit to a smaller area and then we're going to open up a new toolbar by right clicking in a gray area where there is no toolbar and we're going to open the draw tool toolbar and there it is we used this the other during the other session to put some labels on a call out box and things like that and we also use the circle to uh, select some features what I want to do here is again use the the tool I'll use the polygon tool here to draw a graphic on the on the screen and perhaps we're we're looking at um, uh, wanting to uh, to select the roads uh, in a particular area let me uh, then zoom in very nicely let me go here to Norwich and let's just say we're going to uh, select an area of interest running something like this create ourselves a quick graphic to identify an area of interest and then <clears throat> we can go back up to our selection menu up here and there's an option there that wasn't available before because we had no selected graphics it's called select by graphics if we click on that it will select all the features that intersect that graphic area on our in our view from all of our data sets now notice that it's selected a lot it has selected some county boundaries some townships uh, uh, roads things like that obviously we we don't want all of those so how do you control what it's going to select when in our other dialogues we could specify by checking on the boxes well if you come over to the table of contents over here one of our icons here for um, how we list our label is the um, list them by selectability and if you click on this icon then your layers will be listed by whether they're selectable or not detailed roads towns counties they are all in a selectable group right here down below these are also selectable cities but they are not they have no selected set and down below the base maps not selectable so if you want to turn things off so they're not selectable just uh, click on this box essentially that's the toggle button for selectability and you could just turn these off so they won't be selectable and you can say I don't want towns and I don't want counties I just want the detailed roads information so these are no longer selectable we're going to clear our selected set notice details the only one and then we're going to come back over here our graphic is still selected so we go up to the selection menu and we go select by graphics this time we just selected roads that fall and within that or intersect that uh, graphical area and that's because roads is the only one that's selectable and it shows us 620 road segments have been selected so that's what this little icon here will allow you to do list by selection and usually you want to go back and list by drawing order if you want to rearrange things so also you notice on the detailed roads we right click on the layer name to get the context menu there is a selection option here and the selection option allows us to zoom to selected features pan to them clear them switch them and so forth so if we zoom to the selected features we can zoom in to the area of selection and this is, this is good certainly to key into those that you've selected but if sometimes you make selections by attributes or whatever and you may not know exactly what the piece is and this occurs a lot when we're trying to do editing and, and finding little tiny polygons that are errors in some form or another 
and we may be able to select them by their size and then we can zoom to them to find out why they exist and whether there's something we need to to edit out okay so let's clear that out let's delete my graphic just by hitting the delete button while it's selected and let's remove this drawing toolbar by right clicking and unchecking it and then let's pull in another another data set we're going to come over to our geodatabase here and we're going to pull in geology again you can either drop it here and it will automatically throw it in over here in the right location we turn on geology there we go and what I want to do next is just show you what a layer file is and what and what you can use it for right click on the layer and down here is properties if I click on that uh, there are our symbology tab allows us to display things in single symbol or categories and we'll go into this a lot more later but in the next session but for now I want to do it by unique values categories and in my new unique value I'm going to use is a rock description and again we come down to add all values and add them in it reads them all gives them a, uh, a, a color and I'm going to just uncheck other and say OK so sometimes you go through and you create a, a layer as it displays on your in your view you like the colors you like the layout maybe you even want to change the name from geology uh, and you want to want to call it um, if you want to change the name you just click on it and click twice go out to the end and just say maybe uh, by uh, rock description you can do that and if you don't like rock description in there if you click and just highlight it and then hit the delete button it will disappear okay so what if you want this to always come in this way you always want it to be called geology by rock description you want to save the colors uh, you want to save all the whole legend the way you can do that is you right click on the layer name and go down and you use this save as layer file option down here towards the bottom you click on that and it allows you to write out a layer file now the layer file cannot go in to a geo database so it has to be outside so we won't have the option we won't see our geo database but there is a layer file by default it's going to grab the layer name and put an LYR extension on it so say OK and save that and then I'm going to throw it away here and remove it now if I come over to my catalog over here on the right hand side and I notice that I now have, I can expand out my geodatabases here, I have geology by rock description layer. And all I need to do is to drag that over into my view and notice it has the same legend, it has the same name, and it's brought it in. Now this works as long as the layer file can find the data set. You move your data set, the layer file is going to be, uh, the linkages will be broken and you'll have to fix it. But uh, this allows you to make selections. You can have um, all kinds of things embedded in this layer file. Information on how the data set is displayed can be stored in the layer file and brought back into other MapCut documents.